Hi, it's Janet Hansbaugh here. In this video, I'm going to go through um, the Attitude song by Steve Vai and how I approached it as a, a single guitar piece. Um, not very easy, quite challenging, in fact. Some of you may have already seen the video of, of me playing this as a solo piece. Uh, I just wanted to go through a few of the challenges, that's all. I mean, when I first heard the piece, first of all, back in the 80s, uh, you know, as I've mentioned in other videos, I was just absolutely floored. Um, you know, the, the, the sort of creative ideas, the precision in the guitar playing, it was, it was most inspiring. And I just played with parts of it over the years, played around with sections. And, and I thought, well, you know, I wonder if I could make it into a solo guitar piece. I mean, if I can make Mogyo into a solo guitar piece, then maybe I should do the Attitude Song by Steve Vai as well. Anyway, so let's just go through the... Um, the piece and uh, I'll share with you some of the the ideas I got for um, approaching this. So instead of repeating that over, since it's a solo guitar piece, I thought that I would add notes to it each time. The first time, just single note octaves, octave but with the fifth in the middle and then minor seven, major third, same voicing, down um, by thirds, uh, sorry, down by semitones. Of course in the recording uh, Vi uses the whammy bar to play that melodic uh, phrase there. But of course, I never used the whammy bar. I never have used, well, um, I say never have. When I started playing the guitar, I had a, a Marlin guitar. I don't know if any of you guys remember the Marlins. I got one with the whammy bar and I used it quite enthusiastically, but I kept snapping strings. I think it was the guitar, the kind of materials, the quality of the guitar wasn't that good. Even though they had these saddles, which were kind of uh, rounded off there, it just kept snapping strings and I got so frustrated in the end that I just stopped using the whammy bar and I think it put me off for the rest of my life. Um, so uh, that's why I never use the whammy bar. Instead, I've developed a style where I bend strings uh, quite fiercely sometimes in my own playing um, to, I guess, compensate for the lack of uh, the whammy bar. So in this one, I've tried to develop other ways to uh, emulate those, those phrases, in particular the first one. Playing them octaves, much lower register. And here I'm harmonizing it. And it's around the uh, D7, the D mixolydian sound. And then sliding down. And instead of playing the regular C to D, um, I'm playing a C major over D, C sharp major over D sharp, D major over E. And I'll play this voice in here, which is like a, an E7 type chord. Original recording, those guitars, the uh, guitar lines are harmonized and they harmonized uh, by triads. And then back into the main theme. Uh, the second time round, it's pretty much the same there. The parallel fourths. And then I break into fourths, um, four parts. It's a little bit jazzy. Now here in the recording, the the I think it's two guitars. They're doubled. They're harmonizing, and I'm I'm attempting to play both of them <laughs> at the same time. Uh, so it's a. Uh, Main riff. 
life again. And then I go to this... Um, e, F sharp, G. And then there's this descending, classic kind of descending progression. But I made a bit of a meal out of it. I think in the recording it's a bit, um, there are less notes in there. The, the chordal progression is more implied rather than stated. And here I'm stating it with, with added notes, added harmony. Almost like a Beatlesque, you know, it sounds like the Beatles. Almost Dear Prudence like. Um, so it's an E major, D major 7 sharp 11, C sharp minor 11, and then same thing, same chord but with the over C, so C sharp minor 11 over C. Then it goes to B, B mixolydian. Starts off two part harmonies, fifths. Remember in the original recording these are separate guitars and I'm uh, attempting to play them all at the same time. And when it gets here it breaks into three part harmonies. And some beautiful kind of uh, movement there. You got that, those fives. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you get there. Sorry. But I wanted to do that classic um, blues thing you hear on that. Because when I hear that melody, there were those three notes in the guitar, they played the single notes. I, I couldn't help hearing that. And that blues thing. You hear in Frank Zappa guitar solos, he plays that. It's quite a standard uh, blues thing, but I, I wanted to chuck that in there. And here in the original, he bends that E up to the upper minor third. But um, I wanted to use three notes on that section there. recording you have but instead I've sort of modified it slightly and sort of prolonged it a little bit made it almost like a, a country funky chicken picking thing <laughs> Not chord there, which is implying a, um, an E sharp four. And again, in the recording, the implication is that E seven sharp eleven. Got that sharp eleven on the top there. And here I'm just harmonising the melody. Ready. Then you have the quintuplet followed by the sextuplet. And again, there's use of the whammy bar in the recording, but um, I'm sort of approaching it differently here by bending the strings. Now this uh, run that comes up after that is the parts of it that are not so bad, but there's things that can uh, slow you down because of the unusual mix of techniques that are involved. It's kind of running up the 
the E Dorian, and then it goes into this chromaticism and then ascends uh, in semitones, outlining major and uh, dominant 13 kind of arpeggios. <laughs> So I started off by, well, you know, I thought maybe I could, you, you know, employ economy picking here. But it didn't work because you have to come back. It's, it just doesn't facilitate that because of the, the combination of notes. So that went out the window. Then I just thought, okay, I'm just going to have to alternate pick. So alternate pick, uh, alternate picking was what I used. And I think Steve I is using the same thing. And here you have this little trill. And that really is is difficult because you're you're going back on a string. So it's all this kind of upward motion and all of a sudden you have to Just there. Um, not easy, not easy. It took me a long time to get that, just running over that lick over and over slowly and then speeding it up, you know, on the metronome every day, going up one or two uh, BPM till I got it. The most important thing when you're playing this particular uh, run is just that right hand has to be relaxed. Actually, I watched Steve I play it in a recording um, where he's playing it live with the, the this this with the Mike Keneally, and and he plays it with the orchestra, some some orchestra as well, uh, which is it's a little bit slowed down in that video. But just um, you know that whole lick, that breath he takes just before it. Um, but the, you can tell his right hand is so relaxed. It's just, there's barely any movement, you know, in the right hand between adjacent strings. That's the secret, is to, to practice to such an extent that it's just, it's just effortless. Uh, it has to be like that, otherwise it's not going to work out, especially a run like this that is so intricate and got odd combinations of um, notes. Um, it's really important to relax. And I, it's funny because I find you go through this process, you're, you're learning it and you, you kind of tense up because you're trying to get the speed, you're trying to get all the notes and the skips and stuff like that. And, and it, it, it's just tense and tense. And then after a while, you start to loosen up. It's a slow process. And then once you start loosening up, it's to be conscious of that and, and maintain that and keep it loose every time you play. It's really feels like a contradiction in terms sometimes because what you're playing is so technical and fierce, but that right hand has to be relaxed when you when you're playing it. So now there are a few things here. Now I'm quite used to doing all up strokes when I move to an adjacent string. If it's fast and then I'm you know there may be four or three notes on each string. I, I tend to do that if I'm going uh, across the strings. Um, but in this case, so um, now I wanted to do that up on the next string. But if I do that, if I did it up, down, up, down, up, down, up, that D just before it goes into the it's off, it's off, and I feel that if I'm going up and then I'm coming back down for the sweep there, it's more of an effort. If I do down, up, down, up, down, up, down, it's all down for that arpeggio, if that makes sense. If it's that way, I've got up and then I've got to... Okay, just... It slows, slows you down. So what I do is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, up, up. And 
it's it works better um, because obviously you have to minimize movement in order to get maximum speed. After the ascending sweeps, in the original recording, Vi does that. Fifth, fourth, fourth, fifth, and fifths. But I didn't play that. Instead, I, I played the notes, but instead of um, playing them as single notes, I played them as chords. And I changed it here as well. Uh, e minor major 7 chord and then an E flat major 7 sharp 5 and then e, e 7 sharp 11 and these chords don't actually um, these specific chords don't happen in the recording I've kind of embellished decorated it and then Back into the main riff. Again, I think he's using the whammy bar. He's pulling on the whammy bar for that, and I'm just bending the, the string in this case. And then it goes. Uh, I'm playing the C major over A up to a C sharp major over A sharp, which is similar. Yeah, just a slightly different voicing there. The reason I'm playing it here is because you, you've got that set sex tuplets that follow it. It's a quintuplet. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then triplets. And then a quintuplet there. chord and basically what it is is the main theme but played at the same time so to get a chord out of those uh, three notes so it's just uh, three notes connected by semitones played at once a really nasty chord but I like it And that's pretty much it really trying to fill in the gaps you know there's some sometimes you're playing it and you're just playing single notes and you're thinking well am i going to get away with this is this going to work but that's some that's one of the reasons why i embellished it with chords and some harmony so it didn't sound so bare it was just fun anyway just trying to play it it's just a challenge really seeing if i could do it seeing if i could take a a, a piece like that and uh, play it as a solo guitar piece Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and um, that, you know, my run through and how I approached it has maybe inspired you somewhat to uh, uh, approach unusual pieces that are not really made for solo guitar, but nevertheless, you know, they can be challenging, inspiring and interesting. So uh, thanks very much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.